Welcome everyone to the Is This Love podcast. Ooh, the spooky podcast where we navigate and discuss the weird and wonderful <laughs> world of love and relationships. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> hi everyone. We're in spooky season, so I had to Yay. come on. We're I gotta I gotta do some something spooky. <laughs> That's not spooky at all. Um, but hey, hi, <laughs> hi everyone. I'm Francis, aka the other guy, your guide with. Everyone's favorite m- mummy. I don't know. What are we? What are we gonna call you? <laughs> what are we gonna call you, Sarah Nade? What is your? What have you dressed up as for Halloween? What is that? Oh my goodness! I I've never gotten super creative with it. Like I've usually just bought a costume. Like, nothing wrong from with online that. Or something. You, What's that? There's nothing wrong with that. You know, not everyone can just like sew a costume together. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, people get creative to, like, where they don't even need to sew. But I've done, like, you know, the pirate and, sure. hmm, I've done just, like, I used to, as a kid, do, like, a, like a military uniform because we just bought it from the military surplus store. <laughs> and my mom was like, we'll okay. just keep these in the closet and they're always there for costumes. So, you know, I think I was a, a some sort of military personnel quite a few years yeah, All right, <laughs> I can't so, remember many other. <laughs> therefore, uh, Sergeant Sexy over here, Sarah Maid. <laughs> How about that? There you go. Wow. Well, it's been it's been a week. Thanks everyone for hanging out with us as we talk about relationships. You know, love and relationships still happens during the spooky season, which apparently, based on this Australian podcast I listen to, is is tax season for them. So. You know, that's why it's spooky, because it's tax season. That's their joke. Mm. But I'm like, <laughs> I'm an American, and it doesn't make sense to me, so whatever. <laughs> anyway. Uh, yeah, so I hope everyone's enjoying, you know, changing your profile pictures and your names. You don't do that, though, huh? You don't, you don't jump in feet first. I've never heard of that before, actually. Yeah, so people on Twitter specifically like to do spooky names. So they're like, if you you would be, <laughs> uh, well, I don't know, I, I don't know, because it, it it'd be like somebody named Brandy would be Boo Randy, right? They have the boo in front. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god! I mean, you know, Ridiculous. That's spooky, and then they change their profile picture to something spooky. So, I'm guessing that's not you. Then it sounds like that's not your that's not your jam. Even though I guess well, you're not I'm much not, on, online. I'm not right? much on yeah. Twitter, no. But uh, yeah, no, you, you okay? There's nothing wrong with that either, right? Like, I, I well, what I if don't. you like change your name to something spooky and then someone swoops in and steals your real name? No, no, no. You change. You keep your. You keep like your your handle, but you can change your name to anything you want. But your handle stays the same. Like, I could be at oh, AK, the other guy, but the name itself, like Francis, I was, um, you know, Frankenstein, you know, Francis Stein, actually, I didn't say Frankenstein, I said Francis Stein. Oh, I like Stein. that, yeah. yeah. You know, stuff like that. I ch- And I changed my profile picture to um, Gene Wilder from Young Frankenstein, so I'm like, okay, you know, that's kind of fun. Oh, nice, yeah. I like that, that's funny. It's cute. But yeah, yeah, you know. So yeah, if you're if you're one of those people who like to be spooky and scary, uh, now's <laughs> the time to do it because we're in it. We are in the first full week of October, and uh, Hocus Pocus too is like on everyone's <gasps> tongue. Yes, yeah. A movie I thought would never get made because why <laughs> would you make a sequel to that movie? <laughs> I don't know, but I'm excited to see it. Well, I, look, I'm not nearly excited because apparently they don't see Virgin as often as they did in the first one, which is like the only reason to watch the first one is to hear it them say. It was like three times. No, no <laughs> way. Oh, no. No, no, no. I'm, I'm sure that counters on the double digits at least. But yeah, you know, there's Virgin and then there's... Um, uh, I'd want to call her Sarah Michelle Gellar, but that's not her name. What's her name? Oh, Sarah Jessica Parker. Sarah Jessica Parker. Same first name. Sarah, same first name. Yes. And Sarah Je- she, her name is Sarah in the movie. Actually, me and my sisters love that movie because it's like one of the only movies that has all three of our names in it as character names. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you're one of the witches. 
I'm one of the witches. And I'm guessing yes. they're the kids? Um, yeah, or maybe some other character. The I'm bus the only driver? Witch. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Oh my god, the bus driver in that movie is so funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that guy was horny. I mean, that guy... I know. Oh man. And they were like all over him too. <laughs> well, and it's a Disney film, isn't it? Yeah. Oh man. Man, Disney was was bold back in the day. Man, they <laughs> they they didn't care. But uh no, the the three Sanderson sisters are back and is and they're the same actresses, which amazes me because I, I thought is, they'd be yeah. all Bet Miller's still alive, which amazes me, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. Well and I wonder if they I wonder if they will bring back any of the actors. The the little girl was um that was Thora Birch, right? She has oh, been some other right. things. <laughs> yeah. Oh God, yeah, yeah, yeah. It'd be interesting if they brought her back. No, I don't. Yeah, I think it's a whole new crew because it has to be children again, right? Like it has to be kids Aww. again. <laughs> well, right, right. It, it should be the same kids as adults, and it's their kids, right? And their, yeah, that's yeah. how you gotta do it, right? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it, well, if you want to go by the formula, that's for sure. So, <laughs> yeah, so if you're watching spooky movies, now's the time to do it. Uh, the scary movies are coming at you with Halloween ends and all that stuff. So, uh, we got we're we're, we're going to be talking about more of this in an actual Halloween episode that we have planned. Um, I guess we'll have to think of spooky relationship questions. <laughs> yeah, we yeah. got to talk about horror movies a little bit. I think. I think so too. Yeah, I think horror movies, horror music. Because there are horror there's, music, yeah. There's um, uh, uh, Monster Mash and uh, Dead Man's Party, and mm. you know, there's there's a few of them that are out there. There's Thriller, <gasps> of horror course. Horror games, horror games, sure. Like those are too board scary. Games or video games? No, like video games. I um, I can't play them. They're too scary. I can't handle jump scares where I'm like first person. But I try to watch like playthroughs of horror games. Just for fun, and they make me nauseous. <laughs> well, have you ever heard of a game called PT? P. It's just called PT. Yeah, it's just two letters. No. Okay, that is probably it, it, it's the most coveted game because it was a free demo of a game on a PlayStation way back when. It was the scariest game I've ever played. Freaked me the hell oh, out. Really? And all it is is you're walking around a house, right? And it's a uh-huh. it's a pretty circular house. So you, I think you just go back and forth, and things happen as you walk back and forth. At one point, uh, you see somebody walk. You know, you, there's like peripheral vision. You see somebody walk past you, or you'll you'll see a door. You'll hear a noise from behind you, and and you'll notice a door is open, and you go oh into God. the door, and it's the bathroom. But then you look in the mirror, and there's someone behind you all of a sudden. Like like, but it's really. <laughs> I, I kid you not, it's scare. I, I I could not. With it had to be sunlight out. I couldn't play it at night. I had to take breaks because I was freaking out the whole time I was playing this. Oh game. my god! Watch it. It even watching it, I can't do it because it, it freaks me the hell out. But it's a great. I will horror maybe game. try to as long as. Ugh, I don't know. I I might try. The thing about those, like I love the idea of horror games. They're too scary for me to play, and unfortunately, first person games do yeah. make me nauseous usually. But. I'm always like fascinated by them. I want to like read about them and I want to, I want to watch the playthroughs. Sometimes it's, it's tough to watch for more than a few minutes, but I will check that one out. PT. PT, yeah. So go, yeah, yeah, check it out. Some, yeah, the, it, it it's so popular that somebody, br- uh, hacked their PlayStation 5 just so they could play the game again because it's, it's no longer available. You can't find it anywhere. And people have been begging really? for it to come back. People are, 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 he, like just want it. I think Guillermo del Toro like had a role in it, right? Oh. So like there's there's like stuff like there's like people who really put uh, their Wait, hand into that game. Was that the one that had that like really um crazy trailer? I mean, I don't where, know. Like a kid's like bouncing a ball and then it's like his head. <laughs> <laughs> I I don't know. Because there was some, like, trailer for, like, a demo game that was, like, super popular, and they never made the real game. They know they never made it. This is, Well, it could be that, because this is the game. Oh, PT stands for Playable Teaser. It is a game, yes, that was in collaboration with filmmaker Guillermo del Toro. So you'll, you'll... What was the game 
What was the actual game called, though? They never gave it a name. It just stayed PT. That was that's all, all it's ever been called. It was supposed to be part of the Silent oh. Hill series. Yes, I think that is the one that had the crazy trailer. I think it was a Silent Hills game. Yeah, or Silent Hill. It could be. It could be this. But I'm <gasps> telling you right now, yes. this game. That trailer like blew my mind. Well, this, this game. Like, I'm just looking at like the the still images, and I can't. I need to like. I need to, I can't because it just reminds me of the things I experienced in the game and it just, it's, it's, it's terrifying. It's terrifying. I was obsessed with that trailer. I will definitely look into that. Well, look, speaking of terrifying. Is this love questions? So let's get into it, folks. What's a question we can answer? Okay. The first question we have is what kinds of things draw you to a person romantically besides their appearance? Ooh. Uh, that's a good question. Yeah. You know, being newly single, I can definitely answer this wholeheartedly and without much uh, much guilt because, uh, yeah, I think there's going to be a point where I'm going to have to uh, be drawn again to somebody. Mm-hmm. For me, I guess a, a big one, even though it's not necessarily that they have to be a comedian – but that they have a, a pretty good sense of humor. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I, uh, you know, I like to be weird and silly and, and funny. And I think to me, for women specifically, I guess, um, having some, being able to laugh at things, I think is really important. Being able to kind of find the humor in things is really important to me. So I think that really draws me in. If I if I see them laughing at certain things or saying certain jokes or telling doing that type of thing, I'm like, oh man, that that's that's hot. I'm gonna have to I'm gonna <laughs> have to I'm gonna have to sit down for a second because I'm pointing is uh, very impolite. Um, Sarah, <laughs> what, <laughs> what what draws you to a person romantically besides yeah, their appearance? No, this is. It's a good thing to think about uh, because (laughs) I also am single as of some point. (laughs) So what would draw Um, you to somebody then? uh, Yeah, the kind of things I look for or will be looking for at some point Mm. are also it is important to me, too, that, you know, we have a similar humor, that we make each other laugh and that we find similar things funny together. So that is really important to me also. I'm also very attracted, very attracted to intelligence. Mm. Um, mm. 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 And so I've never, yeah, I've never really foregone that in a partner. <laughs> <laughs> Not since like, you know, since I was like much younger and it was just like, well, just try, try whoever's, you know, float my boat for whatever reason because i don't know any better but um yeah for a long time i've always dated people who are who have demonstrated some kind of you know measurable intelligence when you're talking to them you're like wow you're a smart person and you have a lot of things you think about and can share based on my intro into this if ladies are looking for intelligence at least they know not to look my way because i totally (laughs) bungled that beginning era you know trying to get into this whole segment but yeah, no, uh, intelligence, uh, yeah, I think it's interesting because I think everyone has a de- different definition of what intelligence is, right? Mm, that's true. So are you looking for someone who's book smart or street smart? Or both? I don't know. I guess both. Like, um, there's, well, emotional intelligence is really important. Oh, sure. Yeah. yeah. And street smart is kind of like social intelligence. Mm-hmm. That's important, too. I don't really, I'm I'm not really into people who are so sheltered that like they you know don't really get what's going on with like the world at large uh not so much like news stuff but maybe they can't like they've never thought about the experiences of others um like vabbing or or have what's that like vabbing yeah (laughs) or they've (laughs) never like interacted with people outside of like their small circle um I also really like it when people just know, like, stuff about life in general, like, not necessarily stuff you would learn from a book, and that's considered street smarts, I guess. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, that's, 
But mm. I, yeah, and that that's important is like just being able to like learn stuff from life and make you know use of that. And um, but I also do really like people who like think about big complex things and can like tell me about things that I don't know about. And usually, I when I'm with someone, I usually tell them things that they did not know about. So I really like that we can like share knowledge on like interesting topics and so yeah it's it's both really yeah 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 i mean i think that um i i'm curious though i don't know if i don't i wonder how big of an of an importance it is for other men to have intelligence like that kind of intelligence in their female uh, perspectives, right? Like, I'm curious if there's something where they're like, well, I want them to have this vast knowledge. Or are they happy that they just, I don't know. I'm curious. Like, I don't know. Like, well, I, I don't think it's so much as knowing, like, the way everything. they think, I guess, right? More than it is what the they, way oh, they think okay. is important. Yeah. And it's also really nice, I think, for men and women who are who are into intelligence to have a partner who knows things they don't know, because like I said, that sharing is really interesting and stimulating. Um, But yeah, I know a lot of guys who are particularly into intelligent women, this whole thing, men or women is called like sapiosexual. Oh, hello. I mean, the word itself is very, very, very very sexy. Yeah. uh, yeah, And that's like an attraction to intelligence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think it has to do with, for some people, it's just being very well read and well learned, but it can also just be the way you think that you know a lot of things that you can share stuff with each other that you okay. also like practical knowledge of the world and emotional intelligence can definitely play into that. Okay. Yeah, I, I guess I, I think I'm that way because I am trying to think back at all my previous relationships and all of them were uh, had. Yeah, I mean, they all were intelligent people, and they all had a certain way of thinking, and they were all they were all book smart as well. Like they all were educated and, mm-hmm. and whatnot. So it wasn't like um, just talking to some rando on the street who's only never who's never experienced like school life or anything um, that type of thing. Like they they just they had that. So I'm like, okay, so I get it. I guess I'm sapio, whatever you said, uh, sapio sexual. Yeah. yeah. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, I think that's great that, that, that exists. Um, even though I, I mean, look, whatever you're looking for, right? Like, uh, no, no shame. And if, if other things to get you going, um, I know it's different for every person. Um, but yeah, I, I, I think more or less uh, there is this kind of, the, the the valley ditzy stereotype speaking of stereotypes um the uh, valley girls stereotype right where they're like oh i don't know anything <laughs> right mm-hmm. like i don't know if, I, I can't imagine that's a thing that exists anymore in this world you have to have some form of intelligence nowadays because that's you're not going to survive otherwise in this world ignorance is no longer bliss i think in, in the world that we live in <laughs> i don't know i think like the way things have progressed <laughs> it I mean, I feel like the survival of the fittest has not been a real thing for a while because that's true. No, you that's don't true. have to be yeah. very smart to survive in our world because there's so many things to help you. I mean, in like right. our society and right. in other places, maybe it's different. But yeah. I mean, so, I, I mean, that's true. <laughs> some of the most successful people I know, all they do is twerk on camera. Right. And that's it. That's the extent right, of what like- they need to do. They don't have to know anything. They just have to have the biggest breasts and the bounciest butt, and then they're like. And somebody will help them with just about anything. Yeah, exactly. Um, that's it. that's people, success. Yeah, <laughs> I yeah in in our world, yes. Yeah. It, um, for some people, having a partner that makes them feel smarter, like so that they can feel like the smartest person in the relationship. Yeah, that they like that, and so that's like the opposite of a sapiosexual, you know. Yeah, well, it's interesting because I think about how. We are competing. Is this love is competing with other people who tout other things, obviously, right? Like there's – obviously there's no one way to approach relationships and there's mm-hmm. a lot of different ways to approach it. And it's been going on forever. I remember when I was in college, there was this radio guy. He was, I love this guy because he was so 
sleazy and so he looked at too like you see this guy he's like oh man this guy is just oh. all grease his name was tom Lycus, right <clears throat> tom Lycus had a re- had a talk show that was um on during the afternoons and it was it was it, his whole premise was to teach women what men think and to help uh men get women right and he had a very, he had this voice, you know, he had a very craggly voice, you know, <laughs> you know, just very like, right? Ah, he just, just, it was very, just like he's just smoking six packs a day type of voice. And he had <laughs> just this philosophy. He had just this philosophy that was very, to even at the time, was just like, I don't know how you live that way. I mean, I I know how you live that way, I guess, but I don't know how you live fulfilled that way, because in his mm-hmm. head, right, like it's just it, it was just very much, yeah, it was just very much kind of like current current day uh, male philosophies, right? Which I won't go into. I don't want. I, I I'm not here to go into that, but I'm just saying we're the competition <laughs> though to that, and we're hoping that we can give. Hopefully, when you listen to this and you're like, oh, I get, yeah, that's more my style. Hopefully, we can provide you with something that, that, that clicks with you when it comes to finding relationships. Because I think those are the most fulfilling kind, right? Personally, yeah. for me, and I think for you too, the kind that is, that is intellectually fulfilling and emotionally fulfilling are the best yeah. kind of relationships. Exactly. Mm. And that's why I think emotional intelligence to me is such a big part of the intelligence component because that can be missing. People can be just book smart and be missing the other stuff. And that to me is not really as attractive. But can as... it be taught? That's tricky because that's mm. like, can empathy be taught? Because you probably need empathy in order to ca- one, care about <laughs> emotional intelligence and mm. two, like kind of get it. Right. I think you, if you feel like emotional intelligence is important to improve, there's probably ways to do it. But, um, I do like empathetic people who kind of come by it naturally. Yeah. A lot of the time. So that I'm kind of attracted to that too. I'm attracted to like the emotional aspect of a person too. Like if we have that connection and they're an empathetic person also, um, so, yeah, and I, I agree with you. I'm kind of like, I don't want someone who's, like, very different from me. Like, you know, they're from Mars and I'm from Venus. I oh, want- my God. Oh, I haven't heard that. For- oh, man. I know. What a blast know, from the past. Whole- oh, my goodness. <laughs> that whole know. concept is not really, like, what I usually like. What I like is, um, yeah, someone who, like, aligns with me on a lot of things. Right. And on a lot of levels. That really, um, that really attracts me to someone. Now, before we get into the next question, because it might actually uh, apply given what the next question is, um, what are your <laughs> thoughts on people who may have that intelligence, who may have that emotional intelligence, but still likes to look at the horoscopes for stuff? That Okay, so I know that bothers some people, but <laughs> well, I that's think it's I just fun. Yeah, that's it's what I'm just fun. Yeah. Like, that kind of thing is silly. Now, if they were, like, super intense about it... <laughs> And we're like, you cannot leave the house today because I read your horoscope. <laughs> like, I might be like, you're freaking me out a little <clears> bit. <throat> <you know? laughs> so three years ago, I went, oh my goodness. I, went to, <laughs> I went to this thing called D23, which is the big Disney convention. And mm-hmm. the people that I were with and I wanted to go to Disneyland. So we got a, an Uber driver to help us get from the convention. Well, not from, from the hotel, which was far away to the, to the place. And... The whole time she was reading us, she's like, "Okay, what is your sign?" And like, uh, and then she would just go through this whole thing. It's like, "Oh, well, you're this, and you're that, and you're here, and you're there, and this is what you are, and this is what you do, right?" <clears throat> mm-hmm. So, okay, what's your sign? Oh, well, you're. And then it came to me. It's like, "What's your sign?" Oh, you're. Th- oh, well, you're. You're so. You're. I'm not gonna. Well, my ah, my birthday's out there, but I'm a Scorpio, for instance, right? And it's like, mm-hmm. "Oh, you're a sexual being." Oh, and I'm like with two friends who are like. Uh, don't talk about this in front of them. like this is not this is not something you need to say like no you're passionate you're this and you're that and you're like Ur, and like yeah okay 
by the end of it, she's like, I learned so much from you guys. You guys were amazing. And she gave us all hugs before driving away. And I'm like, that mm-hmm. is the weird, that was the craziest Uber, dr- Uber driver I have ever been <laughs> with. But she was really into astrolog- uh, astrology and into the science and stuff. Like, she was like really into it. So that was an interesting experience. But um, we, we gave her five stars and a nice tip, but still, it was like, oh my God, relax, lady. Yeah. <laughs> that's Some all, people that's really bothered by it. Like, they, they think that's like the, like there's something wrong with someone if they're into that. I think it's I think it's fun. Yeah. Like I think it's like it's not going to be accurate right. all the time, but it's kind of like a fun thing to think about. And you know, it's fun when you're like, oh my gosh, you're a Taurus, and you're just like my other friend who's a Taurus. You mm-hmm. know, it's like interesting, but it's I don't think I would. It would be difficult for me if someone put so much importance on it that it like affected our lives. Yeah. That would be difficult, but I, it doesn't like bother me that much. It, yeah, you know, I know it really bothers some people though. So, <laughs> I, 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 I find it funny, but I understand why it bothers people because it's you know, there's a big kind of, I guess, pushback against st- like superstitions, right? And mm. this is really considered one of the more mainstream superstitions, and people are like, stop it. There are no ghosts and there are no, you know, signs and you can't talk to people on the Ouija board and blah, 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 right? Like they kind of equate all of that astrology stuff with like, I could talk to ghosts and, you know, blah, 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 blah. It's like, no, I mean, they're they're separate, but it, a lot of people like to clump it with this kind of supernatural, super. I see. Yeah. I think that, yeah. I think that's my guess on that one because I, the, I, yeah. The people I've talked to who hate it that much are just like, well, it's superstitious mumbo jumbo, blah, 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 right? I guess I just sort of see it as pretty harmless, but it is for the most um, part. Yeah, there's things that I think are a problem, and other people are like, "I just don't think about it, and it's not a problem." So you know, <laughs> that's true. No, that's that's true. No, I, I agree with that. Like everyone has their pet peeve, right? Everyone yeah. has that thing that annoys them. Some might even call it a red flag. I don't know. But oh. <laughs> uh, speaking of which, it, well, I don't know. What's the next question? I don't know. Hmm. Let's see. It's um. <laughs> What are some red flags oh. that a relationship is not going to progress any further? Well, I well, let's see. Maybe saying it's not going to progress any further. Right. Saying it's over. <laughs> saying it's over, I guess. That's a pretty big red flag. <laughs> uh, uh, well, what are... Well, okay, go for it. What are some red flags <clears throat> that you have experienced um, in your life, maybe? I don't know. Or it doesn't have to be your experiences, maybe from other people's experiences. Right. Yeah. I would say if there's like big future plan stuff that you guys completely don't agree on. Like, oh, sure. Yeah. They're like, I don't ever want to get married or I don't want to be in the same relationship for the rest of my life or something. But very few people go that far, though, right? Like very few yeah. people go like. By the way, just to let you know, you're not my last relationship. Like, yeah, that's true. You know. I guess things like you're saying, I, re- it, you know, marriage and kids and all that's really important to me. And they're like, no, I don't want those things at all. Yeah, that that's a big one. Yeah, that's a big one. Maybe you know, uh, if they maybe if they refuse to move in with you when it's you've been together for a few years and it's like just oh yeah yeah know. like why but why though yeah why do you want to have that <laughs> you know they want to keep that separate life yeah. Um, I uh, I would say I mean there's a lot I mean there's the thing is is that even if we mention what the red flags are this is the problem with red flags red flags are, are supposed to be like obviously it's a red flag right oh look this person's terrible but when you're in a relationship you don't notice yes. the red flags how often have you noticed well, the red flags in your I mean you might get to a point where you do but it's been those red flags have been there forever. And maybe over time you start noticing them later in the relationship. But I think a lot of times right at the beginning, even like in the first few years, it's just like, <laughs> are there red well, flags? Well, that's because when you're wearing rose-colored glasses, mm. red flags just look like flags. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There you go. That's a very that's a very popular <laughs> I know. saying on, on the relationship advice. Totally. Forums. But I mean... It, but you know, it still applies. <laughs> even though I knew exactly, I knew I knew where that came from. I've heard that before. I mean, I I, I know exactly what you're saying. But. It's just like a copy paste comment that like <laughs> so many people use. But it the thing is, it it's it, it's true though, right? Like it's mm-hmm. very true. 
I mean, I know people, and I myself have been victim to this, where I just go along with it because I'm attracted to the person. I don't really want to give that up, no matter the kind of flags that you see, right? Totally. So no matter how many times they say something to you, you're just not going to do it. But now, I mean, you've had previous relationships where Mm -hmm. maybe red flags eventually showed up. How long do you think it took you to finally see kind of the stuff that people may have been saying to you? (laughs) Well, okay, here's the thing is there's also like your gut and like intuition. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, and but the sadly, gut, mm. I, I don't think I listened to it when I should. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Like I, that's okay. probably when the red flags first showed up when I was like something tells me this could be a problem later. Was the sex that good? Like was it was it just that good? Like what what is making you ignore well, the gut? <laughs> You, you really care about this person. You really mm. like them. And you're like, but maybe it doesn't mean that. Maybe that's just what society has been telling me this means. Maybe <laughs> maybe it feels like that could be their pattern. But, you know, it's because I don't fully understand the situation of, yeah. like, their past relationships. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, yeah, this is usually not a good sign, but they just don't really seem that way, like in every other aspect. So, have you? Yeah, I know it's it's not good. It's not, well, well like a, out of out of curiosity, during that time, did you have that little voice in your head that said, "Oh, I can change them, I can fix them, I can make them better"? Sometimes <clears throat> I might say, like, our relationship will be different, like. This is like a lot, cause a lot of times like red flags for me come when they like tell me about their past relationships, mm-hmm. like intuition. And I'm like, huh, you know, kind of noticing a pattern here or like, really, that's why you guys broke up, you know, <laughs> like um, just things that kind of say to me like, um, why wouldn't I, why wouldn't we follow in this exact same pattern? But I might think, well, it's going to be different for us because something is just telling me that, you know, our love is special. I don't know. (laughs) Well, I mean, no, 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 but that makes sense, right? Because what are we fed often, you know, in media and music and life is that love conquers all and love is so powerful and love is this and love is that. That we do, I think we do oftentimes feel like, well, you know what, if we put enough love into this, it'll kind of fix itself right because it'll be different this time we love this person so much that they're going to want to change because they want to keep that love or they're going to or or i'm going to inspire them because my love is so big and so fluffy that could be true also yeah like you're thinking well their past you know whatever made them like this in the past was because people didn't treat them right but i'll treat them right yeah yeah we fool ourselves quite often when it comes to we do (laughs) We 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 have this oh. tendency to believe these certain things that that are so untrue, and it's yeah. I mean, look, you know, love is that's what that's what love that's what's so great about it. That's why I love love because it's so it's so illogical. It's such an illogical thing. Love doesn't make any sense. Why do you fall in love with one person and not another? Why do two people who are obviously meant to be together just not? Why are why does one love one another, another person but the other one doesn't? Like why does it happen? In a world of logic, obviously, two people who you know there's certain people who should be who should be together in, in in a perfect world in a world made of of rainbows and lollipops. Like of course, the, there's these people who should be compatible, who, who show compatibility, and should of course be. To, I mean, they should, of course, they should be a couple. Do you think so? I think so, yeah. I mean, in a in a perfect world, yes, because... But I mean, if they're not together, then doesn't that mean they aren't compatible? Well, no, because we're often, you know, we often don't fall in love with our friends whom we're compatible with, right? We don't, we often fall but, in love with... I mean, that's with... what I mean is it's not really compatibility if one person doesn't love the other. That's my point. That's why it's illogical to me, because... If there's so much that that makes them kind of go well together, right? Like they complement each other, but yet they mm. can't seem to make that leap. That's what made that's what fascinates me about love. Why is it that these two people who seem again on paper 
this, this. Like we just, like we just kind of said about what draws us romantically towards someone else outside of looks. It's this, 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 and this. And then this other person comes well, along and they do the check mark. Like, oh, you're this, 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 and this. You know, honestly, like I've thought about a lot of my friends. I've thought about like, you know, would we be good together? Mm. And almost all of them, I can say, we make great friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, because we're yeah. very compatible as friends. Yeah. But I. I probably know something about their personalities and my personalities where I'm like, that would be a disaster in a relationship. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But as friends, we're very compatible. So mm-hmm. I think it's easier. Compatibility is a lot like easier and more fun with like friends. I think compatibility with relationships is really tricky. And that's probably why we want to like ignore red flags because we're so badly want to have found that person that it was so difficult to find you know right again it's illogical you know we we well what's the phrase the heart wants what the heart wants right that's true and that really yeah i do know that it um it's not fun when you like someone who you realize is just bad for you you know no matter how hard you try to make it work they're not it's not a good relationship or you like someone who never liked you back. Yeah. That's, both that's of those the more typical are, one, I think. Yeah, yeah. Both of those are very, very painful. Um, yeah. Which is why it's so rare and special and wonderful when you meet someone who likes you back and they're not toxic. Yay. Right. Yeah. It's <laughs> yeah. Cause it, there is that, there is that desire to be with, you know, again, we, we see somebody, our heart starts to flutter and then nothing happens on the other end, right? It yeah. Just, it's just dust, air, just poof. Yeah. Or you meet someone and your hearts flutter and you're together and you're like, it's meant to be. And then either, yeah, they turn out to be like a toxic person or you find out that you're actually a toxic person or, you know, one or the other is just like, now this isn't really for me. Right, exactly. I mean, it's... It's, it's hard. It's it, hard to find that person. Well, yeah, relationships is a hard nut to crack. It, I think that's again what fascinates me most is like it's just, it's hard. It's it, if it was easy, everyone would be paired up with somebody, and the world would just be like really, really overpopulated because everyone would just be banging. Um, and it would just, (laughs) I mean, you know, right. Because you know, everyone's compatible, right. Yeah. And everyone, uh, and even if you're in same sex relationships or whatever, like it doesn't matter. Y'all are banging and yeah. Yeah. I, 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 and the, mind. (laughs) (laughs) So it's, you know, it's, it's so to go back to the question, it's difficult to really see a lot of red flags often when it comes to the progressing of a relationship because guess what? Um, people will lie, people will try to appease you because they don't want to hurt your feelings. The people will try to do all sorts of things that seem again, once again, illogical, right. We're not, we're, we're so, we so lack this thing where we should just be kind of like straight up and straightforward, but we're not. It's hard because we don't want to hurt anybody. We just don't. So when it comes to red flags, same thing. Even if you notice it, right? We, as we had said before, we don't necessarily want to end the relationship just because we see a few red flags. I mean, just a couple of them, right? Who cares? Just one or two <laughs> or 15, like just whatever. Just a field of them. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> it's kind of pretty, actually. Just all waving in the wind. Like, it's so it's so, it's so nice, so calming. And yet we ignore it because, again, we're, we're irrational beings. <clears throat> so hopefully, hopefully, all you out there will take a second Self-reflect. One of my something. I think it's the first time I've said that was on on this podcast. My last podcast. That's all I ever kept talking about was self-reflection. Was you know introspection, looking inside yourself, finding out what it is, learning what it is about ourselves that makes us tick, why we do the things we do. It's super important, but nobody does it really because it means you have to change sometimes and you have to kind of be better. Because like Sarah said. You could be the one who's the problem person. You could be the one doing all the red flags. So, you know. Yeah, that's true. Sometimes people don't realize that they're the ones putting out the red flags. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. yeah. And then, you know, red flags aren't always necessarily a toxic thing. No, 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 it no. Sometimes no, no. just means the relationship just isn't going to work. Right. 
I mean, but, look, it's yeah. it's it's a it, the the word toxic is in the vernacular. It's something you know. It, yeah. It's it's. A n- I think it's pretty serious though. Like when I hear the word toxic, I I assume something more serious than like you know arguments, mm-hmm. falling out of love, things like that. I think of like. No, stuff I get you. That, you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, we're very, that's where we're different. When I hear toxic, I think Britney Spears. So. <laughs> You know, <laughs> I mean, no, potato, potato, right? I mean, yeah. yeah. Uh, sure. <laughs> it's a great song. I'm just saying. Um, all right. Well, uh, thanks again, everyone who uh, likes to send in questions. Another person likes to send in questions is our very own from the right cow left coast corner. It's right cow left coast with some questions. What do we have this week? Well, he sent us a lot of questions, so I thought we'd answer a couple and maybe save some. Totally. Yeah, totally. Yeah, we have another episode to do um, that we could – we might be able to use some more questions. So, <laughs> Well, it's definitely going to – this is going to go out before Right Cow Left Coast has a chance to send us another email. So when you're listening to this, Right Cow, and you're like, wait a minute, didn't answer all my questions, uh, we're probably going to be answering it in the next episode because, yeah, we're going to be recording before you get a chance to email us for this episode, so – You'll have, we'll have even more questions from you, so even better. So yeah, so we'll we'll save a couple for the next one, and yeah. then by the next one after that, we sh- we'll probably have new stuff. <laughs> oh yeah, 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 yeah. Well, for sure. So well, one really quick one was he just asked if our question segment singing was live or recorded, and I, wish I did, did sing it. my part live you did. for like you know you on the show, but then Francis recorded his harmonizing, which I really yeah. appreciate because I think it sounds so much better. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think I put yours by itself a couple times, and then I'm like, nope, it needs, it needs, you know, if you're gonna do it, I'll do it too. And so I'm ha- I was happy to to contribute to the the segment song. Yeah, I love it. Okay, I'm gonna pick some that are like kind of more specific because I know we're like we're already well into our time on the show. Well, not really. Um, we started late. Oh, that's true. Yeah. But just so, like, we, we aren't getting to, like, really... We can save the really, like, big, like, broad topics for maybe next time, but... Yeah, you got it. I like, um... I like this one. Okay. It's... <laughs> on a certain website, there are tags for certain types of media Ooh. that are on that website. What tags pertain to you? Are there tags that you would not share, like diaper play? Yeah. It's, et cetera? Yeah. Are there individuals who go about dating hoping to get all the tags they're interested in? And does availability of such media become har- harmful to dating in the current era? And Ooh. I just want to, I think, kind of clarify because it isn't really specified here. I think he's talking about porn. He's just talking about porn. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> he's talking about, por- yes, yes, tags. Yeah. <laughs> Or gentleman's special interest media, as he likes, as I like to say. <laughs> <All right. clears throat> okay, um, I was pretty sure that's what he was talking about. Yeah. <laughs> I just yeah. To well, clarify. once I saw the diaper play, I'm like, oh, that's that's porn. Yeah, me too. Yeah. I was like, I'm pretty sure that can only mean yeah. one thing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look. Yeah. Anyway, I don't know. This I don't. You know, you don't have to answer this, but I'll ask it anyway. Do you watch porn? <laughs> Uh, no, I actually, I enjoy like sort of these spicy romance novels. Um, and I, there, there are a lot of like, you know, they're different genres of the ones I like. So the only tag I can think of maybe is like sexual tension. Cause usually the plot is like either they don't like each other at first, but then they do. Or no, in other words, all romance like- novels. Or they do like each other at first, but oh. then they get in a big stupid fight for no reason, and then they get back together. Okay, so it's either, so, it's either Hallmark or romance, or romance novels. Okay, <laughs> no, but they're spicier than that. Oh, you well, know what no, I'm of course, of course, you get you actually get to see what happens in those types of stories, yeah. right? It, and you know, it's it's definitely not diaper play. No, <laughs> what's going on in the bedroom? But it is like more of the, I guess you could say the tag on it is like the plot and like their how their relationship progresses and yeah like the tension and resolving that is like kind of where like that kind of plot is what i like in the books you know um i'm not so much into the books where 
it kind of like the like the vampire ones where there's like a girl and then the guy just like is super in love with her but like can't be with her because of he's a vampire but all he does is like pour all of his infection into her and she's like yes. it's twilight. I want to be with him but for some reason I'm not and it doesn't make any sense you know like <laughs> I want to be with this 150 year old vampire while I'm merely just 17. Yeah. Yeah. But like, there's, there's no real reason for like the tension. Oh, I they see. could just be together, but they make up like all this weird stuff. Like, Oh, but it's f- forbidden because vampires and, and he's also 133 years older than the girl. I mean, yeah, but that's like not the issue at that's play. True, at, yeah. Usually in those, so that, I, I, I kind of have a hard time getting into those. Cause they're like, what causes the conflict in the relationship in most of these books is not that realistic, but in those books, it's like, what they could just get together. <laughs> so, so you, 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 you actually want a real drama in your storylines. <laughs> well, it's not ever like very realistic. Like right. it's always a misunderstanding of like a oh. misunderstanding. Sometimes it is like his, a historical book and it's like, okay, that's a, that it might be a reason why two people don't like each other in the beginning because it was an arranged marriage sure. oh, and yeah, yeah, yeah. you know um or whatever but then they do fall in love so it is kind of it's kind of hallmarky where it's like okay it's maybe it's not like an insurmountable problem but you know? yeah it was definitely mountable all right um <clears throat> he's so i guess yeah. oh, sorry <laughs> go on go on i guess i don't know what tag to extrapolate from that other than like Sexual tension. <laughs> yeah, sexual tension. I mean, you know, uh, nothing wrong with it. It's it. It is in the world of pornography. That's fairly vanilla, I suppose. Right. I guess so. It's just very. Um, yeah, it's it's like the plot, and it's 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 like a romantic thing. So yeah, maybe that's yeah. not. It's definitely not what people are probably into on those websites well yeah a certain these certain types of media here right cow um are ever evolving because it is a problem it is harmful to dating because we it's dudes especially right not all dudes but there's there's a lot of dudes out there who make up people who watch these um uh videos <laughs> I don't know, yeah. you know. um and it's becoming more of an addiction right like it, it's you know it, it there's articles all over the place about how it's becoming rampant and that more as as porn becomes is well it is easily available it's not even more easily available it is it is mm-hmm. 100% super easy to get a hold of which it wasn't in the past, right? Like you had to sneak into your uncle's bedroom and steal his Playboys, right? And you know, mm-hmm. look at the centerfold and be like, "Yeah," <laughs> right? Like, "Oh, there you go," and then read the jokes and not know what it's about because you're just, you know, you're ten years old and you don't know anything. I know any better, so you know, you're like, so when you're a kid and you're young and you're discovering all this stuff, like it's hard to do. But nowadays, it's accessible with anyone who has a phone, anyone who has an, a, a, an iPad, anyone has a computer, and it sucks. I actually hate it because it really does screw with people who want to go dating, right? Because mm-hmm. why? If you, especially since half of dating is sex, right? Maybe not half, but a chunk of it is, right? Like mm-hmm. most people don't get into a relationship unless you're asexual, not expecting to get intimate with the person you're with, right? You expect to be touching them and feeling them all over at some point, right? <laughs> you know, you, if you're a guy, you expect to motorboat your girlfriend at some point. So you want to be able to <laughs> come on now, stop it. Uh, <laughs> it okay, <laughs> it's true. Um, but there's going to be a some point where you're going to want to be intimate. But when that's taken away from you, and dating in general becomes harder. Mm-hmm. You know, young men who are have hormones raging from the age of fourteen on till ninety nine, right? Their hormones are just raging for the rest of their lives, while women ramp up towards it psychologically, right? Like uh, on average, they don't normally they're not normally at peak sexual prowess until like into their thirties and forties, right? Because that's when they're allowed. Yeah, to I have dis- heard that. Yeah, yeah, because the average, you know, the average woman doesn't discover themselves until later in life. And so they become 
more sexually promiscuous and open about that stuff. So there's a big gap between that. There's a big gap of sexuality that that has to be bridged. And porn just mm-hmm. makes it that much worse because now guys don't have to feel like they have to immediately go out there into the dating pool if they want to get, you know, get busy, you know, when in the past, the Sears catalog was all you got, right? Oh, man, laundry section, the Sears catalog. Yeah. There you go. You know, those um, those uh, nursing bras are amazing, right? Oh, like- God. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I've heard a lot of people say that <sighs> – Porn really messes with people's expectations of relationships, too. Definitely. Um, and can make it harder to be intimate with their real-life partner that they're with. Yeah. Um, I personally think that, you know, people would benefit from going backwards in technology with porn. And, yeah, going back to paper paperback stuff. Like, <laughs> uh, you well, know, the- maybe... Maybe they could also have spicy novels for men that have like pictures in them, and it would just <laughs> that's called you know, Playboy. Because it would, yeah, okay. I guess they're they do have some writing in them. Um, <laughs> like, it's mostly writing. There's actually okay. in relation to the amount of nudity, there's way more writing than there is nudity in Playboy. <laughs> like okay, it, that yeah. that's I guess like if you need to like have like a story happening, then you could have like a, a some stories in it right um actually they probably do have stories in those but i think like going more low tech forces people to use their imaginations more and like um if you have to use your imagination more then you're gonna be able to put yourself in the in the right frame of mind when you're with a partner better than needing certain stimulus to get you going yeah. Like being basically reliant on that stimulus. Yeah. But if you get to a place where you you're you have to use your own mind to like make that happen, that is going to help you a lot when you're in a situation where you know, you guys are both basically performing <laughs> something right. with each other. I mean, yeah. It's it'll be tough because, you know, um guys don't need plot and story, right? Like as long as they have the visual in front of them, most men can just could take it, take care of well, themselves. So I've seen, you know, I've seen in like movies and TV shows when they depict this. Yeah. And you can tell me if this is right or wrong because I don't know. Mm. But like when the guys would look at a picture of a woman, their imagination would start having her like, like doing stuff with him. <laughs> Not necessarily, but yeah. Okay, go on. That doesn't happen. It can. You don't like. Okay. We well, can. Here's the thing. It depends. It depends on whether or not the me- that person has had experience before, right? Because if they've okay. had experience, they can relate what the feeling is and go off of that. But if it's if they've never done it before, if they've never had sex, if they've never had intimate relations with a woman, and they mm-hmm. look at the picture, the nudity is enough because they get to see it and they can, I guess, kind of imagine what they do to that body. But they don't know what it feels like. They don't know what it's like. So imagining kind of the situation unless they've had sex already, doesn't really do much for a guy. While I think women's, maybe for women, maybe for yourself, maybe before you even had been come intimate, that reading was enough and you were able well, to picture it. Well, I certainly it was, yeah, I was able to imagine what a relationship might be like before yeah. I'd ever had one. Yeah. I didn't picture sex okay, you well, know, back okay. then, yeah, yeah. but I pictured like the romance mm-hmm. and that was, you know, very satisfying to my, you know, desire for romance. Right. Um, But I think even, I think just like removing the amount of stimulus you need would be really good for people and like, yeah, bring it really low tech, really analog (laughs) and um, just making it so that you don't need to rely on that later or you don't come to expect things to be so specific, you know? Well, yeah. And there's been studies that show that um, the more exposed Men specifically, I guess, to, they are to to this type of media. I'm going to use um, Rat, Rat Cow's terminology, this <laughs> type of media. Um, it's harder for them to g- gain erections. It's harder for them to be aroused. It's harder for them to, because there's an expectation now, right? They have this world that's personally, to me, really kind of gross and really kind of sloppy, which is not kind of my thing. But I see it, you know. 
I mean, look. I mean, I will admit I've looked at porn, so I'm, you know, whatever. But like, <laughs> it's it. I, I'm seeing the evolution of porn becoming more and more extreme, which is getting away from the the more stuff that I'm actually find arousing. So when I see that kind of stuff, like that's really gross, <laughs> and, right? And that really. And yeah, so I, and it's just getting and it's getting more and more towards the you know it's just getting more and more extreme because they know like the people creating this stuff knows that their audience is expecting the ex- more and more and more extreme stuff because unfortunately, yeah. as it is shown, as studies show that if you the more porn you watch, the more it takes to get you aroused because the old stuff won't do it for you anymore. And you got to go up a notch and up a notch and up a notch to well, where it becomes really, you yeah. know, questionable, the kind of stuff that you're, you know, you're pursuing. very depraved. <laughs> yeah. It, yeah, exactly. Right. It gets more and more depraved as you go along. Right. Yeah. You know, it, it becomes more degrading even too for, you know, that's the type of porn that, that people gravitate towards. You know, which is which is why I think, yeah, it, it is. I mean, unfortunately, you know, this is a this is a very um, this is a very uh, conservative take, but yeah, I feel that that yeah, porn is very harmful. You know, I yeah, I think there's I think psychologically that messes with people, and mm-hmm. I think that sociologically messes with everyone. You know, oh, yeah, 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 one hundred percent. Like with this, this, uh, it, it's very much like there's a lot of things in our society like that. Like think about junk food. There's this thing called the bliss point, right? That companies try to reach, which is like the perfect amount of like salt and sugar and all of that, that they test in their ingredients and stuff and see which one is the perfect one. And I'm sure that that just rises over time. Yeah. And food becomes less and less nutritious and becomes more and more flavor packed because we get used to it, but they want to make money. They don't yeah. really care that we're not getting any real ingredients in our body. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, we learn. We have become a a. a we're no I, look. We're a comfortable society. We're we're perfectly fine. We don't have to fight for our food. We don't have to to kill each other for stuff. We don't have to, you know. We don't have to to hunt for berries or or kill our own animals. Like I mean, people still do that stuff, sure, but like we don't have to though. It's not a requirement to live. Everyone else does it for us and then they put it in front of us in a store and then we buy it, right? Yeah, and like we want the stuff that just tastes the best exactly. all the time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And remember we went to when we were both in Japan at the same time? Yeah. Yeah. When I went back home, I was like, oh, my God, I'm going back to American food. And it tastes so fake after I'd been in Japan. And I was like, why do we allow this to be done to our food? I, that's a very good question. Um, I mean, I, I feel the same way about Ireland. When I was in Ireland, right, the food is just mm-hmm. like this is just straight out. The, like it, it feels fre- – it tastes fresher. It tastes – more yeah more like you said real right like there's just something about it that gives it more substance and yeah. and it doesn't take as much to feel fulfilled you know like you're you're not eating as much or even if you are you just i don't know they're better ingredients better everything because it's real stuff and yeah i don't know what it is with, well i know what it is like you said it's 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 big profit. profit right like we want to yeah. we gotta we, we gotta yeah, make it's... gotta make those dollar bills y'all you know it's so sad <clears> that like that is so much more important well, to the people in charge than like the health of our society what's easier to get a hamburger or a salad right what's cheaper you know to get a hamburgers a 99 cent burger or a three dollar salad right like well and what do our taste buds want what are our taste buds accustomed to uh, well yeah right we don't just eat a salad we got to put douse it in ranch or douse it in like <laughs> you know <laughs> all sorts of stuff and that's kind of you know to go back that's our porn right exactly. our porn is doused it's junk in, food yeah it's junk food yeah exactly yeah. there's no intimacy there's no you know and again you're right more depraved i mean <laughs> yes. I, I just want this, this is the only time i'm gonna say it because i always i always find it funny <laughs> but we are like the fact that we are now in the world uh, where com- the, the average porn thing is about step siblings, <laughs> right? oh my god! <laughs> like that's kind of the average. Like that's what you you know. Actually, um, milfs, mother, like mommy porn oh, is now geez. like 
the number one type of porn that's <laughs> out there, right? Which really freaks me out because that's, to, again, to me, not my style, not my thing, not my tag there, right, Cal? Would not be in my tags. But it's popular. It is probably the number one trending is this. Because, again, dudes are having a hard time dating. Therefore, they want kind of a mommy figure for some reason. And therefore, they get it. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> I don't write it. I mean, I ain't you know making what? that stuff. <laughs> I shouldn't. I shouldn't judge because yeah. honestly, that is not the most depraved thing no. anyone has ever told me. But I don't. So I, I, I shouldn't I don't, judge I'm not go, harshly on that. I'm yeah. not going to go to that part. I, we're not a rated triple X, yeah, no. you know, show here. Right? I'm just I, saying. I'm just I, trying to go. I can't yeah. judge too harshly um, because there's definitely. Oh yeah. yeah, that's not the worst thing. But no. Yeah, I would say that the that old Playboy magazine. That's like the salad. <laughs> it, nowadays it is yeah totally and yeah. now it's gone i there was a moment there was a there was a two year span when they're like no more nudes in playboy they're just gonna be in lingerie there was like two years where they did that and it obviously it flopped right but nobody was buying playboy anyway it doesn't matter right playboy is no longer a thing it doesn't exist none of those magazines really exist anymore i think there's some that probably do um <clears throat> I used to be a processor for work and I've been to the I went to the hustler um like headquarters once and mm -hmm. oh my god <laughs> I guess they still exist but boy oh boy that was a uh, their, their staff there <laughs> I was like okay so you only get like like super not porny looking but they were obviously they're all just kind of like blonde you know skinny um whatever's enhanced enhanced staff mm -hmm. and i'm just like okay like i mean if that's the staff that you want to have go for it but that's of course crazy that's the staff they want to have. <laughs> but the thing is at the time hustler was i think owned by a woman so i'm like all right like that's uh, cool well, she's like the she's like the she's mistress like the madam yeah the madam she's that's the, it, madam. the madam yeah no, she's the madam <laughs> so. uh okay so you know what's actually really the organic salad of Porn that I think would be great for people to to put back in their diets or make their diet about would be like the swimsuit edition. <laughs> <laughs> swimsuit editions nowadays too. I mean, are pretty risque. I think, but you're right. Yeah. It's it's definitely not as yeah. It's definitely you're right though. That is the salad. You know, you're not you're one hundred. If you can right. train your yeah. mind to be satisfied with that. I think you will be a dynamite partner. And do you really want to be desensitized to what a naked body looks like? Like, do you want to look at a naked body and not feel nothing? Yeah. You know? Like, you want to be able to look exactly. at a naked body and be like, I want a piece of that, you know? And then, Yeah, don't desensitize yourself yeah. to, to, like, real life experiences, for sure. Good question, right, Kyle? Because we talked about that for, like, an hour. Um, oh my goodness! Did we? Oh no! No, we didn't. No, it was it was fine. I just I just I just like again that we that we we went on a uh, on a on a tear on that one. But what else do you got? Maybe one more from Ray Cal, and then we can move on. Okay. Um, oh. Okay. You have to really Let think about see. these ones. I like it. Yeah, I didn't. There are a lot of like questions within questions. Let me see yeah. here. Okay. I might have asked this, sure. but I had a boss that oh. said you can tell a lot about a person based off of two things. The vehicle they drive and what condition does that person keep the vehicle and their spouse or partner and whether that person is more or less attractive, intelligent, etc. compared to the individual. What do you think of those metrics and making opinions of an individual? I mean, it's still used today. That's for sure. <laughs> like, that's not a that's not a, mit, uh, a, a metric that isn't being used now to measure I, mean, and I don't think that much about like someone's car. No, no, no. As a lady, you wouldn't, but as a guy, you would. I, I actually prefer my car to not look that great Why? because I don't want anyone to have any temptation to steal it or break oh. into it. You, you want, you know, you want, you want the biggest deterrent from stealing a car: What's manual that? transmission. <laughs> well. I can't drive that. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> you can't even you can't even steal your own car. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, no uh, one's yeah. taking this car, not even me. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Um Yeah. Uh I think even though we can 
I mean, boy, I, I, I mean, I guess it's kind of hard not to, but yeah, like I do think that there are guys out there who will judge a person on their car, like the nice of the car. Obviously, I mean, that's why dudes get uh, have their midlife crisis and get their sports car, right? Like they're trying to impress mm-hmm. people. Everything for guys, for the most part. Not everyone, but, you know, and there's enough guys out there who still, for some reason, there's enough of them out there who still measure each other's penises by these things, right? This is. Oh, I thought you meant. <laughs> no, no, not, 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 not actually like doing. when and where does no, no, this no, no. take place? <laughs> not, not, not with a ruler, <laughs> metaphorically. <laughs> all right, boys, let's go to the bathroom right now. We've all just met and we need to get this out of the way. In Japan, they'll do it because they're naked all the time in the in the in those uh, saunas and everything. <laughs> but in the in the U.S., no, they measure each other's. Uh, you know, as they say, the dick measuring contest happens when they have your car and your wife and your slash girlfriend, right? Those are the two things, or even boyfriend, husband, right? Like whatever, it doesn't matter for dudes. Whatever their partner is, male or female, we we judge them, and we also judge them by the vehicle that they drive and the state of their vehicle. Do you judge women that you're interested in by their vehicles? No. Isn't that funny? That's weird, right? (laughs) Isn't that weird? (laughs) Because we don't care, right? Like, they can have the – so far – I don't think I've ever had a girlfriend with a nice vehicle. Like, in other words, it was that kept was kept clean and like didn't have junk in the in the back seat. All the girlfriends I've Mine's ever been Mine's clean with. on the inside. I should take it to the car wash more often, though. <laughs> okay, so you're you you know you I, I you you that's yeah that's you right like you like to keep the interior clean, which is great. I do for the most part too until I stop caring, but like for the first. You know, like with my car, because it's kind of falling apart, I don't care anymore because I'm already kind of thinking what my next car is going to be. So I've already mm-hmm. kind of just like, all right, whatever. I don't care what I do with this with this vehicle. But in the beginning, I want it to be immaculate because when I go somewhere, I want somebody to look at my car and be like, wow, that's a nice car. Yeah. I will say I will judge that. Like, yeah. if I got into a guy's car and it was like a pigsty, I would be thinking things. Yeah, exactly, right? Like, yeah. we are very much, like, again, we, you know, as much as we, as much as we talked about it, we kind of give into stereotypes. We see that. We kind of we kind of think a thing when we I shouldn't. I mean, to be perfectly honest, uh, there's yeah, I'm kind of a German phobe, and like, well, there you go too. Sure, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like I do kind of judge germy, dirty situations, but you know, with fear, of course, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and trepidation, yeah, but, and judgment. Yes, no, and I understand that, and I get it too. Like I said, I, I'm I'm a little less that way. I've been in guys' cars where it's dirty and disgusting, but I kind of I know based on their personality, I knew exactly what to expect based on who they were as a person. <laughs> I knew exactly based on them as a human being. I'm like, I know their car already. You don't got to tell me. They got oh coins everywhere. They have co- they have the little you know the 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 uh, the drink holder, all coins. That's all they got in there. Just just change, <laughs> right? When you open up the glove compartment, receipts. Just bursting to the seams with their seats, right? <laughs> I know this already. I'm already aware, and I'm already prepared, right? And so I, <laughs> I curl up into a little ball when I drive into their passenger seat, and I make sure not to touch anything, <laughs> because the moment I do, guess what it's going to be? Sticky. And I don't need any yeah. of that business. <laughs> but that's The coins all stick together. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. More than one Coke has splashed onto those coins. Yeah. 100%. You don't want to see the bottom of the cup holder. Oh, my God, like the no. bottom layer of coins. No, 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 no. <laughs> Something's growing at the bottom of those coins for sure. Yeah. But that's my point, though. I know what to expect. Like, like, yeah. Right? Like, I can, you know, I can tell based off that. So, yeah. But, but for women, though, if their car is dirty... And it's usually not that bad, like to that dis- d- degree. When I say dirty, I mean they have their jacket in the back, and they have like stuff in the back, and they yeah. have like stuff that they use all the time, just thrown in the back because they need it at some point, right? That's the, totally different. Like car- I am not an immaculate person. That's that's totally reasonable. For a lot of women, their car the car is an extension of their purse, right? <laughs> Right. That's what it is. The car is an extension so of their true. purse. Yeah, yeah. 
And so I understand that. And so when I see that it's not immaculate, and the only time I've ever seen an immaculate car is when the woman is driving like a luxury vehicle. If they're driving a luxury vehicle, oh, it's yeah. like pristine. Like I'm afraid to touch anything because I don't want to dirty it with my dirty skin, you know. But, uh, you know, like my dirty flesh just, oh, no, so now it has my germs. But, like, that – and I've been in a – I know someone who has very immaculate tastes, and I'm like, I want to just live in their car because it's so clean and so nice. It's like so, a hotel. It's like a hotel, yeah. You know? Yeah. It, th- no, I I think um, – that see, that also, I'm like, oh, oh geez, I don't want to mess up your car for sure. Yeah, I feel yeah. that way too. Yeah. But, yeah, I don't really mind, like, a little bit messy so much. It's like – the unknown substances that bother me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, like, I like to, you know, my car is relatively clean. Mm-hmm. I mean, at least it has the image of being clean. Uh, if you look too closely, well, my recommendation is don't look, right. too, well, don't look too closely. <laughs> yeah, that's you know. how cars get after a while. Yeah. Just don't be having, like, a ton of takeout containers of unknown date origin. No, no, I, I don't. I did <laughs> I did that in high school, and I never did it again because I had – I bought – weirdly enough, it was a salad. I had a salad, <laughs> right? And I forgot I put it in the back seat. And all of a sudden, the car just started smelling, like, rotten. Oh, God. And, like, moldy yeah, and I'll rotten. Bet. And I'm like, ah, what is that smell? I couldn't figure it out because it went under the seat. So I'm like, I don't see anything. Where did? Where Ew. is it? So I'm like, all right, Febreze, 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 drive around. <laughs> and then when I get back, you know, go to school or whatever, I come back and it's like, what the hell is that smell? Finally, I found the, I finally found the culprit. It took me, you know, about a week. And then I finally found the culprit and threw it away. And then obviously yeah. it smelled fine. But yeah, so I get you. I, I understand. After that, I'm like, <laughs> no food. I no food stays in the car for longer than, you know, the, the day I bought it. And then it just gets thrown away. Yeah. yeah. But anyway. So there you go. Yes, no, I agree. Yes. Um, so as you can tell then, right, Cal Left Coast, you can't tell a lot about a person <laughs> based on those two things. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think we all kind of judge someone someone on their, like, partner a little bit. Yeah. Like, you know, you're like, oh, I really like them. They're cool. Yeah. What a cool couple. Or you might be like, wow, they're super controlling or they're super, like, like weird and not wanting to talk to me for some reason. Right. So... We all judge, you know. It's it's hard not to. Yeah, I, I there was a photographer, uh, George Costanza, a looking photographer I knew, <laughs> who had a model girlfriend, and I'm like, oh, he must be wealthy or something. Like, how do you get a girlfriend like that, right? When in reality, he was just, you know, from my understanding, I never talked to them, but from third parties, they're like, oh no, no, they they are very much in love, and it's personalities Aww. it's not money or anything he's not wealthy he's just a photographer who yeah. happens to take pictures of naked ladies but that doesn't matter because <laughs> that's his job right like his right. job is that's his, that's how he makes money and his wife is perfectly happy about it because she's one of the models and yeah right yeah so she knows what she already knew what he did she, for yeah she knows what he does <laughs> she trusts him and it's like great but yeah. Yeah, apparently it's it was all personality. It wasn't the fact that anything else. So, you know, <clears throat> you can't always judge a book by its cover, but sometimes the dust cover kind of gives it away. Um, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> uh, I think that's good, right? I think, you know, we'll save. I think we'll do the – unless you want to do the articles before now or we can do it for an after show. You want, or maybe um, we can do one now. What, what do you think? One of those has got to got to tickle your fancy I like a little bit. I the fubbed one. Fubbed. Okay, let's talk fubbed, folks. <laughs> All right, look, we like to talk articles. We like to get into some things. So it's not just us talking off the, you know, what we remember, what we remember and what we've read. We're going to tell you stuff that actually these guys are talking about. And this one's called fub. What is fubbed there, Sarah? <laughs> It's snubbing someone in favor of your phone. So, like, phone snubbed, fubbed. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I am very familiar with this. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Uh, yeah, I think everyone's experienced this. And this says romantic partners who get fubbed Mm -hmm. are more likely to spy on digital communications. Ah. So that's not the direction I would have thought that was going. No. Because there's a lot to say. And feel about seeing your partner just like ignore you in favor of their phone, but I was not seeing it going straight to snooping. <laughs> no, that's um. Well, I get why, right? 
because you're like, why are you always on your phone? Are you trying to talk to somebody? You're trying to. I can see someone? being like, are you talking to someone else? Yeah. And then a lot of people, when they get suspicious, can't seem to help themselves and start just breaking all kinds of boundaries. Yeah. Yeah. Well, look, we're irrational people. You know, we make we make very bad decisions way too often. And in this case, it looks like being fubbed makes sense. I, you know, I try to be aware of my phone when I'm with another person. I usually like to keep it in my pocket or on the table, right? Because I don't mm-hmm. want to be on it. I want to give my attention to whoever's there with me at a dinner or, you know, just hanging out. Like, I don't want to be on there, like scrolling through Instagram or something because yeah. I don't know for whatever reason, but, but that's the kind of world we live in though. Right? Like we live in a world where we're easily distracted and we're, we need to be constantly entertained because that's kind of, that's our world right now. How are you with the phone? Yeah. Though? How are you? How are you with, with having your phone in your hand? Um, so there's a lot of situations where I try to be present mm. And like we're having dinner or something or, or, you know, we're at a place and we're, we're talking. Um, and it can be difficult when the other person is like letting themselves or like getting interrupted by their phone a lot and like mm-hmm. paying attention to it. Cause yeah. sometimes I feel like, I feel like this is a situation where we talk to each other and like, don't look at our phones. Yeah. Um, but there's also a lot of times when I'm with a partner and we're comfortable and we've been together for a while where we're sitting on the couch and we're just both on our phones, you know? I think that's like, different, That happens, though. too. I think that's different. But it's very... Yeah, it's... I, I usually don't... I try not to get on my phone when my partner is talking to me and, right. like, isn't on their phone. Right. When they're not on their phone and they're talking to me, I, like, put my phone down. Mm-hmm. Um, it does kind of bother me when we're, like, sitting at dinner and I don't have my phone out, and they're just like, you know, scrolling through things. And I'm mm. like, I'm not going to pull my phone out. I'm just going to sit here. Right. You know? Yeah. But, oh, I do know. Yeah. Um, I know. Yeah. But it's kind of weird to know, like, do they know why this is weird for them to be on their phone right now? Because sometimes we're on our phones together. So maybe they think this is just an extension of that. Well, I think it's become common practice now i think i think it's normal it's been normalized so much to be on your phone in every and all situations right like i almost think even from based on what i've read i don't know i haven't worked in an office with other people in years so i don't know how true Mm -hmm. this is but like it's not it's not frowned upon or even kind of looked twice at if you see somebody who's working and they stop to go on their phone for whatever reason, right? Yeah. You know, it's just considered, well, they need to be on their phone for some reason. Like, we have prioritized our phones pretty crazily. Like, we have really just made it an extension of our everyday life, which I really, I mean, I'm an old guy, I guess, but, you know. Because back in my day, um, <laughs> you know, we didn't have a, you know, we had phones that could only do one, th- two things. You could call on it or you can text in it. You couldn't do anything else. Oh, you could play Snake. Um, yeah, yeah, Snake. But that's it, right? <laughs> you, I loved Snake on those old phones. Yeah. Snake on a nice uh, Nokia, you know, 50, 5010. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the brick. Yeah. Indestructible. Indestructible and lasted you a week before you needed to charge it. You know, which was great. Because yeah, the right? battery was bigger than the rest of the phone. Well, yeah, sure, yeah. But yeah. that's the thing, right? Like, we use it for everything. We use it for news. We use it to keep in touch with people. Like, it's... Have you ever left your phone, at go and gone out and left your phone at home? Not in a long time. Particularly because where I live... It's very easy to get locked out, and then I would have to get a hold of, like, an apartment person to get me mm-hmm. back in. Mm-hmm. Um, I also think I, – I used to do that more. I actually dated someone years ago who got so upset when I did that. Left your phone got, or had your phone? Left my phone oh, wow. behind. Mm. He was like, what if something happens to you 
How can you do that? How can you leave your phone behind? What if I need to get a hold of you? What if you need to get a hold of me? This is like unacceptable. You bring your phone with you everywhere you go. Like he was really, really worried wow. about it. And he kind of like, he kind of passed that on to me. And I was like, okay, you always got to have your phone on you. Um, Do you? But like, I, I mean, so I think it's important to have it on you. It is sort of a safety device now, you know? know? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Um, I will say that, like I said, I think there's plenty of occasions where you shouldn't be on it, like looking at it, but I think having it with you is kind of important. I think if you're trying to disconnect, you know, you can find other ways to make sure you're okay, probably, or you can just delete all the apps that are the most distracting. But for me, it is kind of like a, uh, what do you call it? A lifeline. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't. I. I look. I. I remember when we could. Like, if you went out to watch a movie, no one could get a hold of you for two hours. Not. No, actually, four hours. Right. The the hour it took you to get over there, buy your food, sit down, and the hour it took you to get back. The Seinfeld days. The Seinfeld days when yeah you had to have a phone. You had to wait till you got home, check your messages. Believe it or not, George isn't home. Please leave a message at the beep, right? And then that's it. You had to wait till you got home to listen to your messages, and and it that's the world that's the world that we used to live in. Of course, that was also the world where if we did decide to go online and somebody pick up the line, you were kicked oh my off God, the internet. Yes. <laughs> so I don't know how great that was, really. You know, judging who wants to get kicked get off the internet. Get off the phone. I'm trying to get online. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's when people started buying, like, okay, we're going to install the second line for the <gasps> internet. I remember, yeah, when we got that second landline, yeah. that was the best. Oh, man. Oh, God. Yeah. I mean, those were the good old days where we needed <laughs> we needed a whole other setup. Just, I mean, I guess we kind of need a whole other setup to go online nowadays, too. But, yeah, you know, that was that was the deal. And now, yeah, no matter where you are. Anyone who's listening who knows me knows I will not reply immediately to the people. Um, it's not because I don't – it's not because I, I don't want to talk to you. It's because I actually put my phone down and I go out of a room and I do one other thing <laughs> or I go and leave it somewhere else and I just kind of ignore it for however number of hours because I don't like having – I mean I don't forget mm. it. I mean it's in the vicinity in a in a place, in a place where I live. But like if I go out – Obviously, I'll have it with me, but like, I don't like having it on me all the time. I don't mm-hmm. like knowing that I can be easily distracted from whatever I'm doing because you know it's now because yeah. you know you know somebody wants to contact me, and it's not that I'm trying to be rude. It's just that I want to concentrate on this thing I'm doing. So yeah, yeah. Well, leaving it in another room while you're doing something is very legitimate. Okay. Whew. All right. Good. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what the phone etiquette nowadays is because apparently, you know, people feel fubbed. So. <laughs> okay, that's kind of crazy. If someone's like, "I was trying to text you. Why didn't you text me back right away?" Then you got to be like, "Okay, <laughs> I am not beholden to <laughs> right. like, yeah. respond to you the second you want to hear from me, and we need to like put some boundaries on our friendship." Yeah, I know there's like around this time. <laughs> some, but I mean, I understand that some people have that expectation, though. Some people, in, especially dating, well, have that expectation. Yeah, when you're dating someone, then you kind of have to figure that thing that that out because yeah. some people are like, why didn't they reply? You know, there's there's two, there's two ends of the spectrum. Yeah. Most people are in the middle, but some people are like, if I text you, I need to hear back with from you within two minutes. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to be texting you all day long. Yeah. <laughs> and then there's people who are like, look, if I don't get back to you for a day or two, don't freak out. <laughs> right. Yeah, 100%. That is the world yeah. we live in is like, it's either one or the other. And it's pretty insane that that's the world we live in, right? And <laughs> before we get too far, I mean, we've strayed a little bit. We strayed actually very far away from this this article. But have you ever looked and snuck onto your partner's phone and, and started no, looking never. at their stuff? Okay. Mm-mm. I don't know. To me, it's like, I don't know. I just don't like snooping, you know? No, it's good. It's good. It's like, 
I'm trying to think of a situation where I would like if it, I would be very scared in a situation like that. Like if I was like, I think they're up to something bad. And then I would be like, maybe too scared to snoop because I'd be like, what am I going to find? <laughs> But it's not good. I'll tell you. I mean, I've, yeah. done, I've done it. I mean, I, I'm not. Have a sh- you? Well, yeah, I did it when I with my ex-wife when she was cheating on me. And I was like, why is she always disappearing? Who she taught? Like, she's always on her phone. Oh, right. She was fubbing me at the time. And like, this was before apps were really a thing. And like, that was, like what, 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 why is she? Like, so you're like, why are you on your phone all, all the, the time? time? Like all the time. And then I'm like, oh, because you're texting to these guys and. Telling them you're going to hook oh, up man. with them. And I'm like, oh, okay. Well, at least I know. Right. I mean, there was one time I, and, and look, am I proud of it? No, but I was so desperate to figure out what was going on. Right. Like I was so, I was in a really bad place anyway. And it's not an excuse. Yeah. But it was a, yeah, I was in a terrible mindset already that I was just like, well, she's obviously doing yeah. something. And I mean, yeah. I mean, that, like having someone, betraying you and you can feel it yeah. and like them telling you it's not happening really or or someone not <clears throat> telling you what's going on with them and you know it's like destroying your relationship yeah and there's nothing you do about i i know that puts people in a really bad headspace um mm-hmm. i guess if i i don't think i would snoop because i think i'd be too scared i think i'd be really scared of what i might find but yeah that's i mean but i'm talking about like something like really bad like right like murder i yeah (laughs) like murder sure um but if i thought they were cheating on me i don't know like i don't think it's i've never run into this problem where i thought if i sneak onto my partner's phone i'll be able to figure out what's going on what's what's wrong with what's happening here right i just needed an answer that wasn't a lie you know, that was all I needed was an answer that wasn't a lie. And sure, it didn't help things. Like, it didn't make things anything better. But at least I had an idea. Like, okay, well, at least I know she's cheating on me. Instead of just being cold for no reason. She's cold because she's moved on to somebody else. Like, okay. Yeah. Right? Like, it sucks and it hurts. But at least I have an answer. Versus, like, well, I have to imagine what it could possibly be or i have to th- you know and again i'm not justifying my actions i still think they sucked i probably shouldn't have done it but because at some point all would have been revealed right at some point it would have happened yeah but how much longer would you have had to like I mean, endure that i it's I would one have of those weird well, yeah it's one of those weird situations where it's like do the ends justify the means it's but a, only if you were right. Right. But, you know, I, in this case, I was, yes, technically justified because I knew something was up and I just right. needed to know what, what it was, specifically what, what was up. And and therefore, I got my answer and, and I realized, oh, okay, well, she's talking to these other guys. Great. Uh, I mean, not great, but I mean, okay, like, cool. I think that's that's a case of two both people have done things they shouldn't do. So right, one person doesn't right. need to be like super doesn't need to feel bad about not being like super noble and doing the right thing when the other person did something like so much worse. Uh, yeah, and I understand where you're coming from too, right? Like I, I, and trust me, I don't think I, I think more people will be like, yeah, at least I understand why you did it, right? Like there's an understanding of why I went through the thing where I went as far as to check her phone, right? Mm-hmm. Um, because again, it, it, it was a different time. Nowadays, it'd be different because, like, of course, there's a reason to be on. Like, everyone has a reason to be on their phone. Like, everyone is trying to find reasons to be on their phone, right? They're trying to find excuses yeah. to 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 constantly scroll through their phone. But back then, it was like you know. The iPhone just well, came out. Like, there's nothing to look at. <laughs> there's nothing to see. And a lot see. of people snoop these days, too. It's harder, too, with all the passwords and stuff. Yeah. But a lot of people do snoop these days. I don't know. It's such a tricky one because, it of is. course, respecting privacy, but also if you're right. Yeah. Right? If yeah. you're correct, then they've done something so much worse first. Right. Yeah. So. It, 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 I know. Yeah. It's kind of like two wrong sort of thing. But... It, but it, I, yeah, I can't really. It, it's you can't really judge. It's like, hard. Someone to. be like, yeah, you can't really judge on that because 
I have a, I you turn out to be right. Yeah, I have yet to be scolded for my 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 actions for because again I I had enough suspicions to where I felt like I needed to at least get my answers. So um, I read me- this story about someone who read their partner's diary. Oh, yeah, I think you mentioned that once before. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that I was just like, okay, well, they're obviously <sighs> not texting anyone in their diaries. No, so, like, no, no. That is just like, and to me, that's like the ultimate, ultimate invasion of privacy. You're like, I found a way to crack open my partner's brain and help myself. So I did it. Right. You know, like, that's just, I feel like the phone thing is makes more sense than that. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, I think the diary has fallen out of fashion for the most part, unless you're in therapy. But, um, for, you know, <laughs> you're most of the I think for the most part, people, I think nowadays specifically, are very much happy to announce online when they're doing de- dirty right. deeds. <laughs> There's so, no private thoughts yeah, anymore. Yeah, <laughs> there are no private like, well... Uh, am, am am I the asshole for cheating on my boyfriend? <laughs> like, uh, like, yes. And then the first comment is like, "You're cheating on me." <laughs> <laughs> and they get, oh man, and then they get the gold and the silver and the you know the different badges and stuff. And like, oh my god, <laughs> to just keep rewarding this guy for like, it was me. <laughs> oh, that's oh, the best. Man. Oh, Reddit never change. Um. Anyway, so there you go. Fubbing. Now you know what fubbing is. Being snubbed by the phone. Oh, man. Mm-hmm. Well, there you go, everyone. That's our show. Thanks for listening. I, I, I promise you I'll get through puberty at some point and my voice will stop cracking. <clears throat> <laughs> oh, it's not bad. <laughs> I, I don't even notice it. It happened a few times. I'm just like, oh, boy. <laughs> my voice will just refuse <laughs> to stop. It just won't stay still. Um if you're interested in sending in your comments, questions, uh, your thoughts on any of the questions that have been asked, because you know what? Look, we're, we're two human beings. Maybe you think you have some knowledge that we need to know, right? And we, we can't know everything. So share with us. Is this love pod at gmail.com? Is, love, is this love pod on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook? Go ahead and share your thoughts there. <laughs> nice. Just throwing so fast just all over the place, um, and of course, is this love uh, dot podbean dot com to share the we- the podcast with your friends and family and your enemies. Uh, let them know that this is the thing that you that uh, you should listen to, just as a- another perspective. If they're listening to other uh, love and romance stuff, we give another view from our experiences, our wisdom. We are imparting onto you based on our own experiences because you can't experience everything folks i mean you could try good luck but that's gonna be tough (laughs) (laughs) so real tough so go ahead and do that and lastly um if you look this is all this is all we ask for this is all i ask for maybe sarah asks for more maybe she wants blood i don't know um (laughs) all we can ask all i can ask all we can ask is that you share the show with a friend let other people know about the podcast um Luckily, kind of easy to remember. Easy to remember is this love. dot dot com. Easy to throw out there. I know I should do this. This love. dot com, but boy, oh boy, I have not figured that out yet. Because <laughs> I am apparently <laughs> technically illiterate, but um, soon, maybe one day, I bought the domain name. I better use it at some point. Uh, yeah, so go ahead and check it out and leave a review. That's going to help us a lot. And we always appreciate it. So thanks, everyone, for listening. Thanks for hanging out. Remember spooky season? This whole episode of spooky, wasn't it? Spooky. Oh. <laughs> I, I, I heard at least somebody jump scare at one point or another. I'm pretty sure you did, too. Probably me. It's, probably, it's, when I, it's when I randomly screamed out loud and Sarah just jumped out of nowhere. I was crazy. I'm very easily jump scared. Oh, boy. <laughs> So uh, if you want to jump scare Sarah, those are the places to go no, ahead and do it. No, Send no, an email. They're jump scaring me. That's <laughs> off the table right now. <laughs> Text, <laughs> Instagram, DM. It's like, hey, bah. Um, just do that. <laughs> you can't see what I'm doing, but I'm just like opening my hands going, bah. so do that. Uh, that'll be jump scare. No, I don't want to get DMs of like scary gifts. <laughs> oh, that's true. My favorite, oh my god, and okay, we're running a little late, but I'm going to say this last thing. My favorite gift, they stopped doing this, but are the ones where they, it, it's an image, right? And they're like, if you look really closely at this image, you'll be able to see like a thing, right? Have you seen these? 
So it's a gift. I it, hate yeah. those so much. It's usually like a, a, a gif with like some sound. But if you stare at it, if you stare long enough, you're going to see an image. And then like about four seconds in, it's usually um, the ring girl, right? Going, ah! right? Screaming at you, <laughs> you know, uh, and, and just freaking you the hell out. I lo- oh, man, I haven't seen that in a while. So if you if you used to do that, go go post that on somewhere. I'll I'll, I'll, re- I'll retweet that stuff. All right, I'm done with the ending. No more, no more outro stuff. Thanks everyone for listening. We'll talk to you all next week with brand new an episode, brand new stuff, more spooky, and we'll talk to you all then. Bye everyone. <laughs>